Violin is one of the hardest instruments to learn. That's why making mistakes when you're first starting out is inevitable. Luckily, they're easy to catch once you know what you're looking for. And as a professional violinist who has made literally all of these mistakes in the past and spent thousands of hours correcting them, I'm happy to share insights with you into the top 10 mistakes that violinists and violists make at all levels so you'll know what to look for. All right, so the first mistake is when the violin is held too low. Now this mistake sounds basic, but is actually something that I constantly have to remind everyone, including students at even the top conservatories. I think it's because most people don't realize what they're doing, but ideally you wanna keep the scroll somewhere between nose and eye level. What happens is when it starts to droop, your instrument actually takes the bow away. Gravity starts to push it towards the fingerboard. But when you lift up the instrument, what happens is gravity works in your favor and the bow starts to drift back towards the ideal sounding point. Now, give this a try and let me know if you can hear a difference or grab a friend and ask them. I guarantee you that at least there will be a 20% difference and improvement in terms of your sound, including tonal quality and projection. Pause the video right now and give it a try. Hey, you're back. Isn't the difference in sound amazing? By the way, if you're serious about changing a habit, especially if it's a bad one, you have to revisit it and practice it every single day. For example, when I was growing up, I'd be practicing in front of my mom and she'd be the one who's giving me feedback as well as reminding me all the things that I learned during my lesson. Thanks mom, but chances are you probably don't have my mother. But luckily for you, I have downloaded my mother and all the insights that she gave me as a child and put them into my phone. No, not a picture of my mom. I mean, tonic. With tonic, you get to experience what young Ray experienced. You get to practice in front of someone, you get feedback from others, you can even get Get bribed to practice. Trust me, it works. My mom did it to me all the time. So yeah, sharing the love of Mama Chen with everyone out there so we can all enjoy practicing together. And by the way, Mama Chen would never charge you for practicing. So obviously it is completely free. You can follow the link in my description below or scan this QR code here to download Mama Chen. I mean, tonic. All right, the second mistake violinists commonly make is incorrect shoulder placement. So the common misconception is that just because it's called a shoulder rest that you should in fact put your instrument on your shoulder, but that is incorrect. The ideal placement of the instrument is actually at a 45 degree angle between your chest and your shoulder. This makes it much easier and you're not overextending your right arm when you're playing, which can lead to injury. Again, it's about having gravity work in your favor when you're playing and setting the bow to the string. Now related to this is a third mistake that people make which is tension in the left shoulder. And this is something that I personally had to deal with when I was in high school and it got so bad that I had to go see a physio. So what was happening was I was gripping the instrument way too hard. It gave me a much deeper violin hickey than I wanted, so much that I had to be careful and wear a Band-Aid. And also it started making one shoulder higher. Now, what probably didn't help was also that I was using my left shoulder to carry my school bag just because I wanted to look cool. So this is something that should be an easy fix once you guys know what to look out for. So once you fix those three things, you're ready for the fourth one, which is eyes closed while playing. Now, most people think that you're supposed to get good enough till when you can close your eyes while you play. It probably hasn't been helped by all the anime as well with all the musicians closing their eyes and feeling like they're in their emotions. You should know that the greatest violinists of all time commonly held their instrument right, as we mentioned, 45 degree angle between shoulder and chest and always either looked at their left hand or looked at their bow. This helps with your intonation, having a visual aid for your bow placement, also helps with your sound and keeping your eyes open and also helps with mental focus. So definitely make sure you keep your eyes open. Now the fifth mistake people make is not practicing for their intended environment. So what this means is most people tend to practice either standing up or sitting down across all repertoire. The thing is you want to practice for the intended result. That means that if you're practicing a solo piece, you wanna stand up like a concerto. But if you're practicing an orchestral excerpt or something that involves chamber music, like in a string quartet, you wanna practice sitting down so that you can get used to the muscles that you'll be using because they're very, very different. Now, the sixth mistake violinists tend to make is having too shallow of a bow grip. So what this means is that they're holding their bow like this instead of this. So what this results in is a shallower sound. Now, my teacher used to hound me all the time. He used to say that, hey, if you're holding a tennis racket, would you hold it with just your fingertips or would you have a proper deeper grip? And it makes sense. Right? Making sure that you have a deeper grip as well as making sure that your fingers aren't too far apart is crucial to having a great sound. The next mistake is also in your right hand and that is a raised right shoulder. Making sure that your shoulder is lowered and that you're pulling instead of trying to get on top of the string is something that is a common mistake people make. And I can understand why, because it's kind of counterintuitive, especially when you're on the lower strings. You're probably trying to make sure that you're over the string. But what you should be doing instead is making sure that you're pulling down so that your bow arm is almost like a hook, like a grappling hook, and that you're just pulling down on the string. And that can result in a much fuller and easier sound as well. Now, 
continuing the mistakes people make in their right arm. This is the eighth mistake and it's having a locked elbow. So you wanna make sure that your elbow isn't locked and that you can make full smooth, bows so that you're not having this windscreen wiper effect which can change your sounding point. So having a nice lowered shoulder and unlocked elbow all contributes to having a great sound. So with two more mistakes to go, this is our ninth mistake people make and this one has to do with left hand tension. So if you notice that every single time you're pulling back your fingers into the palm, that's a bad thing. That means that there's tension which results in poorer intonation and as well as your fingers having to travel much further to get to the next note. It's most likely that you're gonna be pressing too hard as well, which will affect your vibrato and make it narrower. So in order to relieve the tension, you wanna make sure that your violin is placed and held in a relaxed posture. Your left hand is straight, your wrist is not bent at a weird angle, and you're just holding it, and your resting position is having your left hand fingers ready to be placed over the next note already. So you don't have to kind of leap back and forward. The last mistake is the most important one, and even professional musicians fall victim to it, and it's called mindless practice. Now this one's the most difficult to catch if you're the one doing it, but it's so obvious to everyone around you. So when you're practicing, you wanna make sure that you're very conscious and intentional behind every action you make. Otherwise, you're reinforcing bad habits. For example, you could be practicing the wrong notes and not even realize it until you get called out for it, which then becomes very difficult to unlearn because you've already had it embedded deeply into your muscle memory. And this is why I always encourage musicians to practice in front of others so that they can get used to that feeling and be conscious of every action that they take. Now, if you're like me, and don't wanna bother your friends and family constantly to practice in front of them, then Tonic is probably the easiest place to get access to that. All right, so that's it for the top 10 mistakes that violinists and violists make. But again, these are just the most common ones. So if you're interested and curious in learning more, you might wanna check out some of my beginner videos like how to rosin a bow. And for those of you who are working on fixing some of the habits that we mentioned in today's video, don't get too worked up on trying to fix all of them at once. Making sure that you're having fun is so crucial and important to maintaining your passion for playing. So make sure that you you are taking it one step at a time, one hour at a time, and I'll look forward to cheering you on in your practice room. Bye.